Hey guys, Thunder E here, and welcome to my full gaming review on the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro. Now I have done a gaming test and you can check that out to see more gameplay clips. We're gonna be focusing on benchmark and performance, temperatures, the things that really get into that nitty gritty of gaming. Now the iPhone 12 is a solid device. Uh, it comes in at 6.1 inches. You've got that Super Retina HDR display, uh, giving you some very vibrant looks, but it's a 60 hertz display. So those of you hoping for 120 hertz, that's not happening here on this device. Kind of makes sense with the 5G inclusion. And when you look at the battery size from what we've seen, it's 2,815 milliamps. So that's gonna affect, of course, when you're playing games on this device in terms of using a 120 hertz display. Uh, now, uh, besides all that, it's powered by the A40 chipset. And from looking at our benchmark scores, that thing runs pretty well. I mean, it beats everything uh, coming from the Android side or the Android ecosystem in terms of benchmarks for single core and, and dual core performance. So we know this thing is going to do well. And we saw it, you know, we saw some gameplay clips from my, uh, my gaming test. But here we're gonna look at performance. And we're gonna look at, of course, all those games we played. And we'll start off with the first one. So you guys will see, of course, what were the settings I played and the kind of performance we're getting. First game is Call of Duty Mobile, which we played at its max setting with anti-aliasing on. And both the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro did a solid 59 frames per second, 100% FPS stability. That is pretty solid. So that's something that, you know, uh, I think a lot of people can see and take note there. When we moved over to PUBG Mobile, we played a game of two sided settings, Ultra HD Ultra, as well as Smooth Extreme, anti aliasing on for both of them. And first taking a look at performance at Smooth Extreme, uh, both the 12 and 12 Pro did a solid 59 frames per second, 100, percent FPS stability and everything 98 uh, for both the 12 and 12 Pro. Solid performance there. Now maxing out the settings for PUBG Mobile with Ultra HD Ultra, we're getting 39 frames per second uh, for both the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro with FPS stability also pretty solid about 98 and 98%. And that's typical with PUBG Mobile. We saw this with the Galaxy devices doing about 39, 40. So this is quite understandable here with this game. Now things are a bit different when we move over to Jensen Impact. Now this is a game a lot of you said I should go check out and play. And we got to play the game. We put it at its max settings uh, and played it at 60 frames per second. And this is where we saw some differences in terms of FPS stability for the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, where the stability was about 67% and 65%. And the FPS uh, average was 55 frames per second. So drop down from 60, it variated. And when you're playing, you will notice slowdowns. That's what that variation shows. Now, in comparison to say the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, the um, FPS range there, average for the Note 20 Ultra was 40 frames per second. So there's a 15% improvement on the iPhone over the Galaxy. Although the stability or the FPS uh, stability on the Galaxy was much higher at around 75%. So that's what you get differences between, of course, the Galaxy and the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro in terms of the FPS stability for this game. It's quite a taxing game actually altogether. Now, the other game I did performance on was Samurai Jack. That's another game that I noticed some slowdowns while I was playing. And uh, even though you can't actually change the uh, settings within the game, there's no option to do that. Uh, I was getting 51 frames per second, uh, as you can see there. And that's something just to take note so you guys can actually see. Now, with the very range of FPSs and also, of course, FPS stabilities, you're thinking, um, how does this affect in terms of temperature on the devices and what we're getting for temperatures? So with the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, temperatures were about the same. Again, Apple doesn't use any special cooling on their devices as I know, they haven't stated it yet. Uh, so we're getting temps about 107 degrees, especially when gaming for long periods of time and if you're playing certain games. So again, going back to Jensen Impact, uh, what you notice with the game is that the CPU performance, that uh, CPU output on the, in that game was about 141%. So which means the CPU is working on a high load and you expect higher heat dissipation for that in this sense. And that makes a lot of sense. So that is something to take note for both devices. And I think even with all 
that though, performance is still above what we normally see with Android devices in terms of just looking at the FPS range. Even though it's limited with a 60 hz display, we still see overall really solid performance from the device as a whole. Now, combining that with uh, the other aspects of gaming, which is audio, the speakers do a really good job enhancing that gaming experience. And I think people would like that. Now, the other new addition on the iPhone this year is 5G. 5G connectivity brings a lot of great things, especially, of course, just faster speeds. Looking at speed tests just around my own neighborhood, uh, showing some really magnificent speeds on there, like, you know, over 1,500 in terms of just download speeds. And that's something on you can, you know, definitely enjoy on Verizon's ultra wideband uh, network. Uh, and that shows that you can do quite a lot. But how does it affect you as a gamer? Well, with the iPhone, one of the services you can use is using the Xbox app to stream games from your console to, of course, your iPhone. And you can do that uh, remotely away from home, or you can do it on the street or just basically stream your Xbox to your phone, and you can start gaming right there if you want to. But taking advantage of that, I will try and do a 5G gaming video for you guys. So you guys will see, we'll see how the iPhone handles that and what kind of benefits or disadvantages you're getting all the way through. The next and final feature I think the iPhone, of course, brings this year that adds a little bit more elements is the camera. We've got a triple camera array on the 12 Pro, a dual camera array. Uh, we've got uh, new features. Uh, we've got smart HDRs taking uh, an upgrade. And the camera is set to give us better low light functionality, better video quality as well, and just some really great photos. So let's take a look at what the camera has to offer. Pretty good stuff. I think when you look at the iPhone this year, the 12 and 12 Pro, as a gamer and what it brings to the table, the one thing you do want to ask yourself is how is the battery life? And I think when you're using the device as a phone, and especially if you're not on a 5G network, you're gonna get some really good battery life. You're gonna get some decent good battery life. If you're a pro user like myself, who's always on the device, that of course is going to waver. And if you're on 5G, you're gonna take an extra hit as well. Now, as a gamer and gaming for a long period of time, I would say gaming on the iPhone is great. Battery life is not so much while gaming because of course it eats into battery life and you do have a smaller battery at you know 2,850 milliamps. So play, put that in mind and just know that that will come into effect. Now, you also know that you can game while charging with, you know, with MagSafe, which is of course the new wireless charging capabilities of the iPhone. So you can do that quite easily and it doesn't interfere with your gaming because there's no wire, no lightning port wire. It's at the back of the phone, you can hold it comfortably and continue gaming. Um, yes, you will feel some heat around the MagSafe ring, but it's nothing crazy in that, in that case. I know some people say you shouldn't be doing that. I'm just telling you, you can do it. That's just putting it out there. But I think overall the iPhone, you know, uh, 12 and 12 Pro are really solid devices. I think the A14 14 chipset speaks to itself. You don't have to, I don't have to overstate it or claim anything. I think it just handles really well for a lot of gaming needs. Performance wise is great. The RAM management usage is something that Android really needs to look at and say, okay, you guys do well because you running games with four and six gigs of RAM is something to be said that handles pretty well. But 
Those are my thoughts on the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro as a gamer, using as a mobile gaming device, and seeing what I can do day to day, from the camera to the games, performance, all that fun stuff. If you want to see more about the iPhone 12 or 12 Pro, let me know. If you're looking for a camera test, if you guys want to see that, let me know. I'll try and do one for you. I'm pretty busy right now. But leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like and share, and definitely subscribe to the channel. This is Thunder Easing. Thank you, and always enjoy the entertainment.